You ready? Okay. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the BET Budget Committee. Um, if I can ask for a motion to um, modify the agenda. Jeff? Yeah, I would move that we take up uh, first uh, PD4 uh, police, since I see police present, supported by fire department and gym. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The chief's in the building. It's your benefit that they're not here. <laughs> Thanks, you're okay. So this item on our agenda is a request from the police department, an approval to use a grant for of $358,255. Um, I will ask uh, Mr. Kordick to explain the request. <coughs> uh, good evening and thank you for having us. The, uh, the application that's before you is to uh, release around $350,000 to execute a technology-based project for our public safety dispatch center. As you all know, uh, the town runs a single public safety answering point, the 911 dispatch center, which is uh, technically a, a police organizationally a police department product but serves all three agencies it's staffed with civilian employees of the police department and and run as uh, a part of the police department division that I operate but you know we look upon gems and the fire department as our partners really kind of our customers for the precision of dispatch services one thing that they've requested is an increased capability from us in the area of mostly pre-arrival instructions. We currently operate some dispatch software, which we've been running for almost 10 years now, that's kind of the state's standard dispatch system, which is very strong in some areas. One area that's particularly strong, which I'm sure you'll be glad to hear, is the price. It was very inexpensive when we installed it comparatively. But it does have some deficiencies that are, would be supplemented by this software. So if you call the police department to report an incident that involves fire, EMS, or police, there are a number of different steps, and I, I tried to elucidate those in, in this document here, that the, uh, the, the public safety dispatchers, telecommunicators, go through. Um, critically, one of those is interrogating the callers to find out exactly what's wrong and providing them the best pre-arrival advice that we can. Uh, you know, a, the classic example of that is uh, like CPR instructions <clears throat> prior to the uh, arrival of first responders. This software, this project came about as a request from our fire and EMS customers to do a better job at this particular thing and uh, it costs money to do that. <clears throat> About hopefully not all of this $350,000, but a significant portion of it. This includes two pieces. It's a, it's a software piece and a hardware piece. We're going to be required to update some of our hardware systems to run this. This particular project does not, is not, uh, doesn't affect the mill rate in any way. These are, again, grant dollars, part of the state 911 telecommunications fund. Uh, every quarter, the state sends us a small stipend of money uh, that the budget director bankrolls for us uh, that we're constrained by state statute to spend on technology-related projects. And to make it a really long story short, <clears throat> that little few cents of 911 surcharge that's on your wireless or wireline telephone bill the state takes the lion's share of that money and spends it to actually operate the statewide 911 system. Any surplus that they don't spend gets re kicked back to the places in Connecticut that actually answer the 911 calls based on a super complicated formula. Um, but we're required, because of the statute that governs all this, to spend the money on expenses related to telecommunications projects and our public safety answer. And this, this well qualifies for that. Um, this is actually you know, a, a perfect example of one of the uh, permitted expenses for these 
dollars, and all we're asking you to uh, do is allow the release of them. Until we complete an RFP, there may be a small ongoing licensing cost for the software, but no. And, and I hope a lot of things will change, which is we'll be able to provide a better product for our so partners. From a public safety technology standpoint? <clears throat> That's a pretty broad question. One, one thing that we've been talking a lot about is uh, wireless telecommunications with the advent of FirstNet, which is the federal government's effort to make some cellular bandwidth space available for emergency public safety communications. Um, you know, Im improving our ability to use that bandwidth when it becomes available, say, for example, by um, getting a, a cell phone in the hand of every police officer that we're paying the bill for and can control because the costs are, are relatively modest and there you know, would be a huge operational advantage for us to have uh, you know, certainly every police officer with an assigned police department telephone number that we could expect to reach them at when they were on duty and things of that nature. Um, scheduling software is another thing that we're kind of looking at. Uh, right now we're using a piece of technology which is, again, about 10 years old, very inexpensive, not super efficient, and it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that modern um, scheduling software has, you know, the ability to communicate wirelessly with our personnel for overtime hiring and you know prioritization of overtime hiring lists which now is a manual process that a desk sergeant sits down and he looks at a bunch of giant ledger books and runs some figures and does some calculate and then decides you know Bob Smith is the next guy to be offered overtime and then he picks up the telephone and places a manual phone call to Bob and asks him if he wants overtime not a super efficient process um, just to let you off the hook a little bit. We can I make it go on for hours and talk no, about technology. Right. We, can, we can talk about this at the budget <laughs> hearings, yeah. too, you know, when he has more time to think about priorities and alternatives. Mike, sorry, other questions on this item? No, I, I just I would love to, to know how we found it, how, how we ran into this program. Two reasons. The fire department oh. wants us to do it because <laughs> it improves their ability to respond to things efficiently. And uh, GEMS, actually, right... <clears throat> So, so the, without trying to be respectful of the committee's time, the sort of the first area that this really got started was with emergency medical dispatch, right? And right now we use a, a really antiquated kind of flip chart style thing at every dispatch station where if you call up and say, my baby's choking, the dispatcher flips these cards and it classifies things and it's, it's suboptimal. Um, electronically is is much better much more efficient but really in that medical area <clears throat> was where this technology really got started and and EMS or fire started to 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 pick it up more and more and even now you're seeing that there are a few law enforcement products law enforcement is a little bit more difficult only because there's a much wider range of call types that we go on it's not you know if somebody's hurt or dead or some you know something's on fire or there's a hazardous condition of some sort you know, there's, a, there's a, a much broader area of law enforcement response. So, so I, I wanted to know just a little bit more about this. This it, one's on. It says it's on, but this is not. It, um, for some reason, it doesn't seem like it's working. Um, 
when did you get the grant? Um, you know, does it come in? I mean, were you aware of getting the grant, or did you ask for this grant? When did it come in? Um, this is, you know, I realize it's a grant, um, but should things like this be considered during our budget cycle? Even though I realize that the money is coming in from a third party, like many of our other grants. So can you just give us a little bit more background on the timing and why now in the middle of the cycle? Because it seems like we get a lot of middle of the cycle um, interims from the police department. I think this is number four for this year, and we basically only had, this is our seventh month. So can you just give a little bit more update we on that? Only, uh, four that you receive are those to accept grant money, not for any uh, interim appropriation for operational requirements. In the last eight years, we've always stayed under budget. These are for grants that of opportunity, like the distracted driving or the safe roads grant. And those are cyclical. They come in once or twice a year. This is a uh, bucket of money that's been coming in for many years. muddying the waters if we included it in, in the budget request because it can't replace any operational things. This is for and this particular grant, this particular set of funds is strictly for support of the 911 system, which we support townwide. <coughs> so that's that's really and it. And also, this is a project that's been uh, ongoing with a committee that works with police, fire, and EMS for many months. Um, and we had to do some due diligence. We had to look, recognize that we had to do it rather than just purchase the upgraded software from the company that we currently use the flip cards from. We want to get the best product. So again, I, I'd say that we probably won't be spending the money until it's almost the next budget cycle because it's going to take a couple months to make sure that there's a product that the fire department and, and GEMS and our and our operational folk in the uh, in the uh, communication center find that it is adequate. So, uh, I mean, I said I just think that it's hard for it to be generalized that projects that are ongoing, and um, like I said, we've only come back, it's only for request to spend money that we've already received in the public grants, and this is a grant that is statutorily, uh, we're entitled to the money. The other grants are ones that we actually seek out and apply for, like safe roads and distracted driving and DWI and uh, those types of things. I think, you know, we, again, we do get other grants, you know, similarly from other departments, I just, you know, wanted more, so this money has been sitting there for quite a while, is that what I gather? No. I, Roland, we, we get about, I think, $30,000 a quarter. Yeah, we get about 30000 And again, that's dependent on a lot of math, and it's not a steady income stream either. It's fundamentally what's the state's leftovers. They divvy up between the municipalities based on a complicated formula. So the problem with taking this, this particular funds and rolling them into the operational budget is we can't depend on it. Right? I mean, there have been years that no money goes into this, you know, comes down to the state from this. So they well, establish... It, it almost sounds more like a capital item rather than necessarily an operating item. But Roland... There's currently legislation that is perhaps going to change the formula that towns receive the money and how uh, PSEPs, public safety, telecommunication answering points are operated. So, again, we're taking advantage of the, of the present of the money But no, again, you know, I think it's great. I just wanted to understand more about the process. And then, Roland, where do we retain this money and in, in what fund? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a restricted reserve account in the F fund, which is where all the other ones are, like the, the shellfish or anybody that accumulates money like that over the harbor management. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, it isn't a question exactly, uh, Mark. I just wanted to mention that. I mean, you have a number of items here which are not to exceed 30000 not to exceed 5000 not to exceed this, not to exceed that. So I don't think this is particularly relevant. But when I tally up the items on the, your sheet, it actually comes to $1,000 more 
then you're asking for a transfer of it comes to um, uh, uh, just a uh, just a snip more. I mean, the 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 two forty eight three hundred. If you tally that up, it actually comes to two forty nine three hundred. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, math then, error typo. Then add to the one hundred nine. The total comes to three fifty nine two fifty five, and you're asking for three fifty eight. I mean, I assume you've got room in the not to exceeds to cover the other thousand. I just want to be sure that I mentioned you in case. It, it makes you crazy at some point later on to figure out what the other thousand dollars. Okay. No, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and well, that, that, I like those guarantees. As a so, as a practical matter, we've budgeted what we consider to be sufficient money, more than sufficient money, to cover any expense now associated you're, with now this. Now you're frightening me. What? <laughs> well, no. because we are going to go through an RFP process. We base these process these on an estimate. These it's pricing on an price. estimate the fire department got. Yeah. Uh, which was a budget estimate from sort of the, there's one particular company that's kind of the Godzilla company in this space. And there are some others yeah. that produce equally good products. And, you know, there actually is a state contract out there for that Godzilla product. But I think we're still going to do an RFP because I think, A, we can do better on price right. than a state contract. And, you know, B, my customers, EMS and FIRE, really want to see what's out there. And But there is one particular company that dominates this space, and we based these estimates on yeah. their budget estimates. I'm sorry, Tony Turner's not here to hear that, because he's been advocating for a long time to do more purchasing, not off of the state contract, but to try and bid it, because he thinks some of those prices are not all that com uh, competitive. So thank you for having your part in that play. Uh, Done. Um, I wanted to ask a few questions. How much do we currently have in the in this fund? You said you'd get about 30000 a month. Seven hundred, um, and uh, if I read this correctly, the, you said the replacement you know, the alternative is to throw out the whole CAD system and start fresh. Would be another way to upgrade the system, getting even more functionality. That's in the millions. But what's the life expectancy on the current one we have? You said it was in the two thousand nine when we installed it. Does it? So the CAD situation in our police department is interesting and by CAD I mean the computer aided dispatch system this is what the dispatchers primarily interface with that we have programmed to tell us who to send what particular law enforcement EMS and fire units based on our protocols to send to which particular calls based on availability and places attracts locations of equipment and that particular system the system that we currently use is a, a very Connecticut-centric system. It was written about 15 years, 17 years ago now, at the request of the Connecticut State Police, who was looking for a particular system to do this, and they sort of commissioned one. But it has a huge amount of functionality and interface because it's used by all state agencies with other... Um, public safety dispatch operations in Connecticut. About 75% of all PSAPs in Connecticut use this same software that's made by the same company. And the state contract pricing is actually very attractive, mostly because the state contract is structured in such a way that when the state buys it, they it, it, there's a formula where they apply the population served. And when you apply that to 3.5 million people in Connecticut, the state police is paying a lot of money for this software, but you apply it towards you know sixty thousand in Greenwich. We paid one hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars for the software nine years ago. The lowest competitive budget estimate from a, a, a large, similar competing product was three quarters of a million dollars, and the I highest one we got was about two. I, I think I, I took us down a little path that I hadn't intended. The, the question that I want to address. Can't hear me. All right. Jeff too. All right. So they're silencing all of us. Okay, that I can hear that I'm coming over. Um, it's it's really the opportunity cost for this funds. We can spend it for this application, which sounds like a, an improvement for services for our citizens. I understand that, or it could be for future capital expenditures required to to either maintain or upgrade the mechanical equipment. So I don't know what the useful life is of what we have, or is there a regular reinvestment 
that's required to maintain hardware and software for the system to, to kind of plan out the future uh, revenue we might get from this funds and the best way to utilize what we're receiving? Well, we, we have, there are technology projects out there in the 30-year capital plan for the police department because all of this, although, again, it's, it's used by all the town agencies, it's, it's for budget purposes in that 212 code in the police department. So, you know, yes, there, there are, there's a capital plan out there that includes future technology refreshment expenditures. So some of those items that are in the capital plan could be funded from grant money. From this particular, if we could money. guarantee the income stream, certainly, right? right? But I, I, I don't, I don't know that that's. We never know that. I mean, it's thirty thousand dollars for right. these four quarters. Right. It may be two next year. Right. Maybe zero. Right. I just, maybe a hundred. Just wanted to get a sense of as we look forward as to how we're spending the resources that we have. What are the calls on the funds? And um, so that that's helpful. Um, the um, if, so if the costs exceed the other, to Jeff's question, if the cost exceeds your estimate, maybe more by 1,000, there are additional funds within this account that you could then come back to seek additional. That would require another trip back here, and it I don't would. know that I'd be willing to do that for $1,000. <laughs> but maybe if it were like 5,000, maybe, okay. Perhaps. Um, and then. <laughs> I'd like to know what his price is. <laughs> the, um, uh, Implementation challenges and training, and I know all of that is included in your, your forecast for the project, but just curious, how long um, from getting the appropriation to when you think it might be able to be functional for the town, uh, what kind of horizon do you think we're looking at? I think it's me. It's not me. No, it's in, a, in a me. perfect world, depending on how much we have to do and how long it takes to get, you know, the biggest risk to time on this is going to be the RFP process and potentially the contracting process, right? It's been my experience that the, the, the contracting piece is always a, a huge potential exposure. So, but I mean, assuming that we can either find the set of price that we like it or, you know, and award it in, in pretty short order, we already have, with our fingers crossed, right, we already have an interagency meeting scheduled for January 24th. One of the things on the agenda is I've already started working on a draft of the RFP for this. Um, which we're going to circulate for everybody to look at that day. And, you know, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to get that on the street in reasonably short order. Mm -hmm. Some time to respond, you know, summertime perhaps, late summer. Okay, good. Um, I have no further questions. Any additional questions? No. Can I have a motion to recommend approval <laughs> to the full BET? For so moved. Second. As a, um, Mr. Richard, 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 Right with me. I think routine is fine. Routine as a routine. Mr. Mason, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, and I want to thank Assistant Chief Kick and Ms. Cool, cool. Kick. <laughs> Everyone for attending. I'm tripping over names today. So the next item on our agenda is ED9, uh, Board of Ed uh, request for an additional appropriation of $536,000 to address the water damage at the high school in the Performing Arts Center. I realized last time I stole your thunder by giving the short story, but so I'll let you do that today. Thank you for coming tonight. Of course, Leslie. He came planning on you doing the story. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, uh, I, I, I don't know if I said it in public or I said it in a meeting. I, I think I know more about this uh, this event than I do about my water, my daughter's upcoming wedding, which is where you'd like to be spending your time, which I will not say to her. Anyway, <laughs> on Wednesday, Dece on Wednesday, December twelfth, a flexible connection, the piping for the heating system in the gallery of the Greenwich High School uh, Performing Arts Center failed, causing flooding damage to the area, as well as the pack, the gym, and other adjacent rooms. Um, work is being coordinated. Performances were. Um, were located and so were sporting events. Um, funding is necessary to cover the cost of the response and repairs to get the facilities back in service. The BOE has submitted a claim to the insurance company and is working closely with the town in this matter. Uh, we're looking for $536,000. This, uh, uh, this, the projects are, uh, um, the gym's done. The gym was done as of today at two o'clock. So, congratulations. So that's that was. Uh, Thanks to the um, 
I always forget their name, but I shouldn't, Deline Flooring, which is the original contractor for the gym floor uh, two years ago. So they, um, they, they were able to uh, get that done a lot faster than we thought. We thought the 21st would be the date. So it's today. So there's a home basketball game tomorrow night that they'll actually play, be able to play at home. Um, not on the sticky floor, right? Not on the sticky floor. Okay. And uh, the PAC, um, I keep on saying February 1st. It should be a lot sooner than that, but February 1st is the day I'm going to say in public, and then no one can yell at me if I... Uh, <laughs> I, I just don't want to give an earlier date. It should be done a lot sooner than that, but February 1st is our date. And uh, I know that our um, insurance uh, individual, why am I blanking on names? Megan Melissa, D'Amato. Megan, Megan D'Amato is working closely with the Board of Ed on filing the claim, and the expectation is at least that this damage is uh, eligible for reimbursement, uh, probably uh, uh, Covering much of this expense, is that correct? Except for the twenty-five thousand deductible right. in all three of the cases. Right. And again, we're looking at that piece to see if that is the right piece for the uh, for the uh, for the pack. There's twelve. There's not sixteen. I said sixteen last night. There's twelve of those uh, in and around the pack. We're looking at those, uh, and if we have to replace them, we'll replace them. But right now, uh, we're getting opinions from different people on what part should be there. There has to be some, it's a, it's a, it's a device that's going to um, stop uh, any kind of noise from uh, impacting performances in the pack. So the question is, is it, the, is it the right piece? We'll find out. Right. And I, I know that there's been a lot of outreach to the design engineers, the the company that installed the part or and you're also working with third parties to evaluate that information so and, I know that the, you'll continue the to good work news, that. even if there is some good news here all the companies Leslie that you worked with mm -hmm. to build this uh, beautiful uh, space are cooperating now that's true. everybody's cooperating so with Turner's cooperating the people that put this part in are cooperating. so everybody's working with us now it was uh, there was a uh, like crickets before this, but now everybody's uh, coming forward and uh, working with Dan Watson. So that's a good news. Silence out there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Yeah. Are there any questions, Mr. Mason? So uh, I'm I'm pretty sure we, we we know the answer to this, but in all of these, whether it's Costco School, uh, the high school events, in previous storms and preparation, we've always pulled out all of the expenses for your, your internal team, not the outside contractors, your custodial, your maintenance, whoever you had to enlist to clean that up. And I know after last night's series of meetings, which some of us were all there pretty late last night at the RTM, I think you're going back to the RTM in March to give them sort of an update. But I think it would be interesting to, to have that information for them, how much you know, over time you had to, you know, turn into the insurance company. Because that'll be reimbursable, which is really good to, good to know. And be replenished back into the budget. But I think it's, it's really important because when we did all the big storms, that's what we had to do town-wide, police, fire, et cetera. Even, you know, preparation costs. So I, I just think it's, it's important because your explanos are, you know, hey, this amount of money is covering the following. We understand that. We know what you're doing. Everybody can see the work. But I think it, it'd be interesting to see how much of your own budget resources you had to go into that you need to get replenished, you know, to make the end of the year. Oh, absolutely, Mike. Yes, thank you. Ms. Tarkington? So, actually, Ralph, that was the lead-in to my question. Because, um, you know, on your breakdown of costs that you presented in your, in your backup memo, um, there is a, um, you know, $9,000 for this overtime for um, custodial, mechanics, security, all those kind of things. But also, there's a BOE oversight and contingency of $67,000. And when I did the calculation, it's 15%. But on this, I was, you know, just sort of, can you help me? What is BOE oversight? I mean, I do understand how you, and in the past, as Micah said, we've charged, um, or, you know, we've, we've taken into the account, and we're reimbursed for the custodial, et cetera. But um, I was wondering... What is BOE's oversight, and how is that calculated? And I would imagine that is uh, 
having uh, Dan and his management crew there, not just the maintenance facilities uh, guys that we have working, and that's overtime, but it's Dan being there on Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, and other other senior staff being there to uh, um, monitor the work that's being done. Because generally... And the contingency is to, in case, you know, we go over, but I don't think that's going to happen. You know, because I, I believe that Dan is an MC employee, management confidential employee, so he, he wouldn't be compensated with overtime or something like that. So, you know, just... I, I believe that's, the, I believe that's a just, fact. Just Lindsay. informally yeah. or whatever, you can I can, just kind I of I can look actually into that. find out for you. Thank, thank you, but I think, you know, we all obviously want this done, you know, as rapidly as possible, and also to repeat the quality look that was there before, both in the performing arts center and in the in the gym when they redid the floor. So, um, thank you for all the work that everyone's doing on this, and it's great news to. And I think I saw it online or in the paper um, that you know it's sort of ahead of schedule, and that's really good news. Well, when it came right, uh, our gym floor uh, construction company came the next day. So they were right on site. Uh, Warner came that night because they were working for us at Costco. So we were able to get hygienics in there as well, make sure that we were taking down the walls that needed to be taken down. The walls are all, all back up. Um, basically, we're, they're painting now in the, in the pack, and the pack's going to look like it did when, uh, before December 12th. So that's all the good news. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I think the implication when you say we're talking to all these various people, the implication is you're going to try and get to the bottom of exactly what happened. Absolutely. Was it, was it the, the right part? And is it, it, is it the right part or not? Was the part itself yeah. defective, yeah. et cetera? And especially because of the implication that you have that part, that same part installed in, by the same contractor in, 12 other in a places. lot of other places yeah, yeah. and things. So if mm -hmm. it was installed wrong, it might be wrong <laughs> elsewhere. If it was a defective part, it might be defective elsewhere, et cetera. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm sure you'll be asked at the end of the day, after all the dust has settled and everything is done, I'm sure you'll be asked at the end of the day by somebody uh, questions that are leading to the question of trying to recover the $25,000 deductible uh, or perhaps other dollars as well that are not insured, uh, which would be more in the name, nature of a, a claim against a manufacturer of the part or, or something of that sort. And that's on your agenda too, yes? Well, it, right now... We're just doing. We're just researching, and the companies are working with us. Uh, I think um, that's possible in the future. But I think the, our only claim right now that we're going to look towards is towards our uh, insurance. Uh, no, it's uh, looking towards the mechanical room and uh, the device that failed there. Right. Different project, but uh, that company has stopped talking to us. So. Okay. Um, okay. All right. There might be. Uh, we might be able to get our twenty-five thousand deductible back there. Right. right I say, okay. but you know. right. Are there any? No, Pete, you have no I mean, just to follow up Jeff's question, if I may. Yes. It's the insurance companies that are subrogating the claim against the uh, vendors, not, not the board of that. I want to be careful to be sure that when they settle their claim, they don't settle their claim just for the subrogated amount, leaving out the 25000 uh, Then at least it ought to be communicated to the insurance companies that we want be kept in the loop of what they're doing, and we want to share Perry Pursue with them, that if they're recovering 70% of their claim, we want to be recovering 70% of our 25,000. I'll follow up with Megan. Okay. And Megan has been wonderful. Yeah, she is wonderful, guys. isn't she? Yeah. It's, been, it's been great working yeah. with her. And again, I'm, I wish the guys from the fire department were here to hear me, but save us again. Absolutely save us. Thank you. Thank we you. think Ralph Mayo is pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a See, motion that, that uh, well to approve? <laughs> so moved. Um, Second, third, yes. I almost want to put this routine. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, I heard a second. All yes. those in favor? Aye. The next item on our agenda is the health department item. Speak up. All right, I'll just shout so that those in the room can hear me. I don't know about those watching us. Uh, who knows? Um, okay. Thank you. Show and tell. Show and tell. Okay, thank you. Remind me. What's your last name? Thank you so much. 
You want to? Can you hear? Okay, the mics are working. Okay, so it's just in the room. We're not talking into the mics. Okay, no. He just came in, he's come in. That's a perfect arrangement. That's a perfect arrangement. So the next item, next item on our agenda is HD4, the health department. Approval to use the HERR grant for $15,248. And with us today is Debbie Edwards from the Health Department. Welcome. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say uh, Caroline Baisley would love to be here, but they had a loss in the family, so she wasn't able to make it. So you're stuck with me. Sorry. <laughs> I will try my best to answer all your questions. Um, but I'm here today so we can accept the funding for the State Health Education Risk Management Grant, which is the HRR grant we, we use. Um, this is what I gave you before is the consultant we will be using, hopefully. Uh, Eve Berry, and from what I understand, a lot of you do know her. Um, she's very qualified and has exclusive training and working in the accreditation that we're trying to prepare and be done with soon. <laughs> but it's a very long process. There's a lot to be done, and there's multi-facets multi of the program that has to be done. I recall uh, Ms. Baisley talking about this during the budget hearings last year, so I remember this name. Um, is this, have we... Has the project already started and it's continuing now? Am I co yes. remembering that correctly? Yes. yes. So is it, you think, three years? Do you have an idea of how long it might take to get to the end of the process? I believe it's going to be less than two years. I know that Caroline would like to put in the application in June. And then from that time, I believe it's about 14 or 18 months that the information has to be sent in. Um, there's a bunch of rules and a bunch of information. It's, no, it's not just one category. It's like category 1A and then might be one, you know, A through D or more. So, and they want examples and information. So. I remember the accreditation process for the high school that they go through every 10 years, seven years, and there's a lot of detail really looking at your whole organization, what you do, why you do it. Um, and uh, a lot of information that has to be gathered and shared. So I understand that it's a detailed process. Um, are there questions from my committee members? I think it's great that the program's continuing. And the funds that the town okay. can achieve. All right, can I have a motion to um, I, recommend I move approval? That we, um, uh, approve this uh, appropriation and um, that we do it as routine. As routine, I agree. Uh, second, Mr. Mason, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, David. The um, uh, last item under request for budget adjustments tonight is Nathan NW2, Nathaniel Witherell, a request for release of conditions of $30,000 for their gym expansion project. Uh, we have received information in writing from Nathaniel Witherell, both the, what was included in the agenda and then some additional questions that were asked and they responded to in writing. Um, and uh, so I believe the committee had enough information to act on this without asking the uh, board chair or management of Nathaniel Witherell to attend tonight. Um, I would like, uh, Roland, if you can remind uh, the committee of what the actual condition on this project was, that would be helpful. Okay. And the release that's being requested today is 30000 not 90000 right? The steep grant is in here is 182,000. The bids came in lower than that, uh, lower uh, at 192 approximately is what they were uh, 
believe that they are going to move forward with. And uh, they uh, are adding a 10% contingency to estimate the cost of the project to be 212000 Therefore, the 30000 from the Friends will be sufficient. If the 30000 is not sufficient, that Nathaniel Wither would have to come back to us to release some additional funds from, again, from the Friends, since that's how the project is being funded. There are no town funds being used to, to uh, pay for this particular project. The condition does talk about confirmation of receipt of the funds. We were told also that the board is meeting this week to, release, to approve the release of the funds, and we'll wire them by Friday so that the funds will be uh, with the town of Greenwich prior to the full BET meeting, but we don't have it in hand today. Is that right? It would be Friday. Okay. Um, the meeting is tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, so I, th yeah. I think our motion uh, for, could be to uh, approve the release of contingent subject to the confirmation that the funds have been received by the town. I, I don't think we have that um, authority. Normally we just recommend to the full BET. So that's the, the recommendation. Release. So that would, that would be the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are there any other discussions? Yes, Mr. Mason. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't have a question on an item. I just want to sort of translate this. Nathaniel Witherell's authorized already to spend the money. So there's a condition on it saying we want a certain amount from the friends, right? So the authorization to spend is there. So what are we, we're just releasing 30000 of an appropriation, a portion of, a, of an approved appropriation already, right? Yes. No, we have to get the money into the, the town from, because remember, it's in the Friends, which is the 501c3. Right. So I get it. So where, do, where is that acceptance? Who approves that acceptance? BET. Technically, it doesn't even say BET. It's just a confirmation of the spending of funds. I guess normally when we put conditions on the budget, we're assuming that the BET would be the arbiter of whether those conditions no, have no, been no, met. I, I but get it. Yes. And, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in favor of this. But what I'm trying to say is, is this, how have we, how is the town, because the BET normally doesn't accept, we create appropriations, we create the avenue to spend. How, it, there must be a resolution in the budget that the Nathaniel Witherell can accept gifts from the friends of Nathaniel Witherell? There's a, I just want to be clear on the vehicle movement. There's, there's actually a um, section in the charter that al allows them to take, it wasn't exactly called Friends because it used to be the... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that there's a section in the charter that allows them to take the gift money from... I think there would have to be a resolution. There's a Even charter um, section that allows Witherall to take the funds from this... Um, you know, what I think used to be the auxiliary versus this, the French. This procedure has nothing to do with the I know. Sorry. So you're saying this is I like just, a gift. I'm, I'm missing something. This somebody's gift giving to the somebody town. cash. Somebody's got to have permission to accept the cash. We create the avenue to spend the cash. That's already been done. Only when we created the avenue to spend, we said, hold on a minute here. When you spend this, we want to make sure a certain amount of it comes in from this third party. So we That's been met. So we condition. So we're just, all we're really doing is releasing a portion of the condition. Are you saying where is the approval of the receipt of the gift? I just want to make sure that the, the re approval of receipt of the gift is, in pro is, in the, is, is appropriately done. I know the appropriation is there. We're just releasing a condition or part of the condition. Did you follow? I think Mike's concern is that to be sure that there's authority for Nathaniel Witherell to accept the funds that are coming from the friends, does that exist? Because that in itself is something which either has to have a resolution or maybe to Leslie Tarkington's point, it may be the equivalent of a resolution in the charter itself. I, I have not seen that, but I think it would be a budget resolution. Right. I'm, I'm trying so to get the charter right now, but it's a, I haven't pulled it yet. Yep, that's already done. And all you've really done is created an Condition. environment, release, right. an environment, 
you're releasing thirty of the ninety. Right. So the BET, the only thing we're really doing is releasing a portion we're of the money. No, we're, we're not accepting. accepting. Yeah, we are. Then why are the money to us? No, 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 no. no. But the BET is not accepting the gift. We, there's, there's a provision. I'm, I'm led to believe there's a provision in the charter that allows the Nathaniel Witherall to accept the gift. They well, can't the, spend the Nathaniel Witherall is a town. The town is a the town. There's a condition restricting the appropriation, which we're releasing. The Nathaniel Witherall is a town. I mean, it's not like it's a separate entity. Yeah, but the friends in it. And so I have a party giving funds. They can't give the funds. And Mike's question is whether or not this authority make that gift that escapes the requirement that gifts either be pre-approved in a resolution or approved by the RTM. RTM. Well, this is something that's been going on for decades. I mean, whether we know it or not, you know, they put on these lunches and use the food services. I mean, think about how much money we funded into Project Renew already from donations that we've never taken exception and done anything other than what we're doing now. So if we need to do this, obviously we should do the research. I agree with that. But, um, well, I'm not sure it's efficient to do the research during this meeting. I yes, think we can, right. I okay. think we can, um, the budget committee can um, act on the items subject to uh, confirmation of being able to accept the, or right. accept the gift the, and then for, Monday, uh, Tuesday. for Tuesday's meeting we'll get the information. So, so I'd like to just make a point of a couple of the questions that were asked, if we can just kind of relate it to the, the public. Um, I just think it's important that the, the public be aware of some of these um, questions that were asked. One is, um, would, is this a better one? Um, one, would the um, Witherall be managing both the um, projects that we just recently approved in the tower as well as this, construction pro um, project in the um, greenhouse or whatever it is we call it now and the response was no the tower renovation project is scheduled to end by the middle of February 2019 with some punch list items going to the middle of March 2019 and then this project the um, rehab um, expansion would be scheduled to begin in the middle of March um, also asked if there would be a board member or board committee who would provide the oversight to the project. And um, the, the response was who or what committee. The director of facilities is, is going to be managing them. But um, he reports to the building committee, and then it's chaired by uh, Louise Pouchel, and I guess Larry Simon is also on that committee, and they just reviewed the projects. I think that may be a little different than managing the projects, but... Um, the question was that. Leslie has, has um, discussed further the project um, has a proposed 10% contingency, which I think is lower than the contingency we normally use for a renovation project, which is 15%. They, they said, well, since it's already gone out to bid, they felt 10% was sufficient. Um, but apparently there's other funds in um, Friends that they can use. And the other, The final question was, um, will there be testing for asbestos or other such contaminants, and would they be required? And I think the response was um, was directly um, to address just asbestos in the greenhouse. And um, so um, I think that that was the response. So I just wanted to cover, so the public knows that we did um, at least just, just ask some of these questions. Uh, section 60 of the charter reads, the Nathaniel Witherell Board is authorized to accept gifts or grants of money or property in the name of Nathaniel Witherell for the purpose of the nursing home or rental units for the elderly upon such terms as may be agreed to by the Nathaniel Witherell Board. All monies and securities received for the Nathaniel Witherell shall be in the care and custody of the treasurer of the town for the use of Nathaniel, of Nathaniel Witherell in accordance with the terms of the gifts or grants therefore. Section 60 of the so you want to hear my response to that? Uh-oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean we don't need a motion with a no, subject to clause, uh, except for the subject to receipt of the funds? So uh, can I have a motion to approve the release of conditions subject to confirmation of receipt of the 30000 prior to the January 
22nd BET meeting. So I'll make that motion, but I would just change the initial word. I would change the initial word to recommend the um, release of conditions to the full BET and it being subject to the receipt um, of the funds. Um, we say by the town treasurer because that's what the charter says. By the town charter? Or by the finance department. It doesn't make it. Receipt of the funds. Prior to. Uh, so yeah. Leslie made that motion. Can I have a second? Second. Can I do that as we change? Sure. Or release of conditions. No, I think release of conditions can only be released by the full BET, so it can't be retained. We will also need confirmation of the funds, so I think it needs to come as a non routine item. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and the uh, next item on business uh, uh, on our agenda is new business planning for the upcoming budget meetings. Um, I just wanted to make a few short comments about the meetings, the, uh, the, uh, because the budget committee's next official meeting will be uh, for that purpose. Uh, the, I'll review the dates just quickly, but the budget is being presented to us on January 24th at 6 o'clock, both the town's budget and the Board of Ed, followed by a public hearing. We then proceed to have um, eight days of meetings with uh, the Board of Ed and, the, and operating departments. We're meeting on Thursday, January 31st with the Board of Ed. Then the following week of February 4th, we're meeting three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the 4th, 6th, and 8th. We're meeting on Monday, February 11th, and then the following week, we're meeting on Wednesday and Friday, Wednesday the 20th, Friday the 22nd, and then the last day of meetings with departments, which uh, probably we won't schedule individual departments for, will be the 25th. We'll leave that open for uh, items which we need to return to based on prior discussions. February 27th is Consolidation Day, March 1st. Uh, decision day number one, and Monday, March uh, 4th, is decision day number two. I'm currently in the process of scheduling departments uh, for the days that they will appear. We know that the uh, Board of Ed will be with us all day on the 31st, doing both operating and capital, and we will schedule the other departments accordingly on the remainder of the days. Um, we are switching our venue this year. We're going to be meeting in this room. The reason was to have better working microphones. <laughs> However, I'm a little questioning that decision right now. Um, but be assured of my, my fellow BET members and even the public, we're going to set the room up with tables so everybody will have a working surface and it's, uh, so all of us can follow with all the documentation that we have. Um, the, um, we made a request of Roland, and he followed up with information to the full BET to provide us with the year-to-date operating expenses for each of the departments, the year-to-date revenues, and an open appropriations report uh, should be submitted to everyone. Before you do that, can I just go back to your calendar with three items? Yes. Uh, my calendar, and again, I probably loaded it a little earlier, I had January 28th. I'm sorry, 29. 29. So we had about three months ago, uh, there was a, that was originally going to be our Board of Ed operating date. There was a, no, actually one of our members had a conflict on okay. that day. So, so there's so no we, 29th. There's no 29th, and instead we added the 11th. And the 11th is, is a Monday, it's February. It's a Monday, yes. And then on the 4th, you have, you, you've added decision day number two. That was always was on always the schedule. There. Okay, gotcha. Just checking. Thank you. Yeah. I just need to make a couple changes. But yes, not everybody noted, noted in their calendars that we're not meeting on the 29th, January 29th, and instead that will be February 11th. So um, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, once the departmental schedule is, is completed, and I'll, I'll share it with everybody, but we will also post that online so that RTM, and maybe we'll send, we'll send it to the RTM committee chairs as well so they can see when departments are meeting um, and if they're able to attend or watch us on our streaming video. Um, the, um, uh, as I said, we all received year-to-date 
operating expenses, revenues, and appropriations. Thank you for that, and thank you for the explanation on the revenues. And as BET members have specific areas of concern or global area of concerns, I'd, I'd ask you if you uh, let me know what those are. We can either tr try to accommodate uh, getting information about that within the course of the budget hearing so that we all have the information we need both when the budget committee votes in, in March and then the full BET vote several weeks later. Um, so that's on, uh, that's what I had to say about budgets. Um, the uh, next item on the agenda is approval of the, uh, one other item on the budget uh, meetings. Um, there are several provisions within our guidelines that we ask departments to provide us with information either in advance or to uh, be prepared to bring that with them when they come to speak with us. I am going to send out a reminder to all of those department heads of what our expectations are so that the conversations that we have are about uh, the information and not whether we even have the information available. Okay. Are you, are you going to cover this? I'm not going to review the operating statement here because that's really what we're spending the next four weeks about. But I do think it's, it's good to say overall that um, the, in terms of the revenues that Basically, in terms of our budget, it basically in terms of our budget it looks like um, we're over a million dollars ahead um, in terms of the inflow versus what we had budgeted. So that's good news, and and so I do think it's always nice in an environment where we question so many things that also deliver some good news. Thank you. Uh, next item of business is the approval of our minutes from December 11th. Are there any uh, comments or changes to be made to these minutes? So yes, um, I um, I had submitted some changes um, to the minutes, which Leslie had accepted. Um, and she wanted the changes by Friday, and I was had done it timely. However, um, Jeff came in later with some changes, and so um, thereafter, I think I submitted um, two changes. One, just the spelling of one of the people's names from the Round Hill Fire Department because I didn't have that. Did be changed. No, um, it has, it, the additional information I had by that Monday but I hadn't had before was that his name is spelled C-H-A-S-S -S. and um, added thereafter. C -H -A -S -S -C -H -A -S -S. No, that's what I thought it was and, and I was, I followed up and it was not correct. And he is a board member and project manager, if we want to add any kind of um, descriptive with him the way we had with the others. I had tried to get that information to so do it timely, and I just board didn't. Board member? Can we just say board member? Board member and project manager. I mean, the other people we had, what right. role they right. play. Sure. And then the other thing that I had submitted um, in response to Jeff's um, addition, um, he added that Mr. Raymer also commented that the negotiation of the terms of the agreement between the town and the property owner is the responsibility and prerogative of the office of the first selectment assisted by the town attorney. And then I added thereafter, but I guess I had missed the next deadline, even though I thought I'd done it. Uh, Assistant Fire Chief Kick shared that after investigation, they found that there was no written arrangement between the town and the Banksville Volunteer Fire Company for their renovation project. I think that was, um, people were looking, how did we have the arrangement before, and there was no written arrangement um, when we've done a similar type project before. So I, I, I think suggest actually his remarks at the time were that they thought there was something, they searched for it, they couldn't find it, and that there, in fact, may have been no written arrangement. I don't think uh, Assistant Chief Kick was confirming to us that after investigation, they've learned that there was, in fact, no written arrangement. No, I think it, it actually came out more strongly. I didn't put that in initially, but then with your additional sentence, it seemed like um, I've written that down, Jeff. I, I didn't bring my other notes with me, unfortunately. I mean, I, I would say that that's not um, the sentence that uh, Mr. Raymer clarified. It wasn't an additional sentence. I think he rewrote a sentence, but was to communicate, um, I think, a, a, a substantive point in in the conversations about what affects the next steps. Um, if there's lack of clarity on information shared at the meeting, and this doesn't attempt to try to explain everything that was discussed at the meeting, 
I would opt not to include that new sentence, um, especially since both you and Jeff have different recollections of what was stated. I, I think the important part is, I, see, what came to my mind was the, was the operating agreement. An operating, uh, when they, we were talking that night, that group was talking about an operating agreement for if we do this renovation with them, participate with them on what they're going to do, what we're going to do, and it, we're in the operation. And I'm like, okay, I don't know how we have that. because That's what I originally thought when the minutes came out. What I think Ms. Tarkington and I think is important for us to understand is people are going to say when it comes time to doing this, well, what did we do with Banksville? Well, it would be much better to because even last night we were at a meeting and our minutes were part of the meeting last night on a different subject. But it w I think it would be better for us to be able to say, hey, look, at, at this point in time, we look to see if we had a some type of an arrangement with Banksville where we joined in with their renovation. And, I, I, it, and what I'm concerned with is I don't think that that Banksville renovation will have anything to do with the Roundhill renovation. However, if it's a question we can get off the table now, let's, let's, we're going to look at the Roundhill quote, arrangement, whatever it's going to be. We're going to look at it as what it is. We're not... It's not like I have five others to compare it to. We're going we're gonna to look at what's the town going to do, what are they going to do, what are we going to get. So I'll be more explicit and say that I, I raised some concerns. I mean, I said that as a general matter, I support the idea of town money and those sums being used to support that renovation. But I said at the time that if this is the contract, I wouldn't vote in favor of it. I, I, I can't support that contract. But I stepped back from that and said it's not my place or prerogative to start to propose the, right, the rewriting of the contract. I, I said, this is the business of the first selectman. When they've done their work and brought it forward and say, that's the contract, then I can, for my own vote, I can pass on the question of, yes, indeed, that's fine, I can support it, or no, I can't. If they come back and say, we're going to give those funds and there's no contract, there's no provisions that govern it, I'll have to make the decision at the time if I'm prepared to release town funds without any contract whatsoever. But for whatever it is, I mean, our job as a finance board is to react to the proposition put before us and yay or nay as to our no, no, individual no. vote. Can I bring the discussion back to minutes? Okay. And so, so for the purpose of the minutes, I, I mean, I was trying to be light-touched and minimal. Uh, there was, uh, there was a, I can't remember what the language was that the minutes came to us, but there, it's something about, and Mr. Raymer, uh, express concern about the management or something. Uh, that didn't quite make the point. And so I added a sentence which said, my concern was with the contract, and the contract is the business of the office of the first selector, which is what I said that night at the time. And that's still what I'm saying. And it needs to be in the minutes because that was a reservation that I was expressing as to the item itself. Right. And so then the question becomes whether there needs to be a reference in the minutes to the Banksville agreement. If the fellow members want to put something in, then we won't act on these minutes tonight, and I will go back and look at the tape or ask the fire chief what the correct information is. I don't believe it is substantive that belongs in the minutes, but I think I'm in the minority. And that's a point to be discussed with the first selectman. That, that induces the first selectman to propose that the project go forward without a contract because we didn't have a contract in Banksville. That's his business. Yep. And then it'll be our business to decide okay. if we want to vote in favor. So here, I, here I don't agree with you, Jeff, because um, this is the minutes of our meeting. The minutes of our meeting should reflect the discussion that we had and the discussion that both we as members of this committee had and the discussion that Bob Kick had. I do think that holding it for, if, if it's we, all right with We you, can do that, but the minute... It, and then we can just see what it, it tapes us. Right, I mean, but I, the minutes don't ref, really reflect the discussion. They reflect not highlights. No, it's I not don't. a transcript. Okay. It's not intended to be. Finding that right gray area of the fine line of what's in, what's out, I, we don't, it, it's not a key point. It's not like we're arguing over the substantive nature, although we want to get it correct. So I'll go back. And look at the I'll, I'll tape. Help you, I'll help you if you want. You know, I, well, everybody knows I'm, I'm, a big, the I'm, I'm the big minutes person, right? <laughs> but in this particular case, I think Mr. Raymer is exercising a point that 
hey, look, you know, we're willing to do this, but we there's I'm flagging this issue right now going forward that what I was trying to do. my decision on this going forward will be based on this, which I have no prerogative in, but you're really sending out a message. But he wasn't but, you know, the he wasn't the only one at the meeting. To, no, 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 I know, to, to I know, do I know, that. I know. So okay. anyway, we'll we'll defer. Uh, we will postpone action on the minutes then for this evening and bring it back at our next meeting in February, not the next the next business meeting in February. With that, that completes our business for tonight. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Thank you. Aye.